So regardless if you work on electronics or you work on jewelry making or whatever else you do, you might need a microscope. Or in fact, you're going to need a microscope. I mean, unless you want to use a magnifying lens, you can, but a microscope's going to suit you a lot better. The question is, do you buy a scope like this? or like maybe one of these camera microscopes, or a digital microscope with a built-in screen and a stand for it. Stick around to the end and I'll kind of give you an idea of what scope you should buy. Also, this video is sponsored by And On Star. They sent me out a scope to review, so this is going to be an all-encompassing review of these different microscopes. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think of it. And also real quick, I do want to give an honorable mention to my first microscope. They used to have a, a base that it kind of connected to, but I wouldn't really recommend this for more than just diagnosing or troubleshooting. You can do work with them and they do work, um, but it's very limiting and I'm going to tell you why with this next scope. Now here is the microscope that I use on a daily basis besides my digital scope. Uh, this scope is a trinocular microscope head, also semi-focal. That means that these two eyepieces and the spot where you can put a camera all work simultaneously. You'll see some microscopes that are trinocular will have a little metal piece here where you pull that out and it will actually stop one of the eyepieces from working and allow the camera to work. Um, so it kind of doesn't really make sense why you would want to buy one of those, but maybe that's what you like. Quick differences between this scope head and this one, uh, this one has a zooming feature. So not only does this scope head go up and down, but you can also zoom it in as well. This one just has an up and down feature. You can't really, you can just focus it, but you can't zoom in. So for instance, if you um, are looking at a piece of jewelry and you see a tiny crack and that you need to maybe fill it in with uh, solder, I don't know how jewelry works, but if you're working on electronics and you need to, you, you find a solder joint that is just cracked very finely, you can find it with this scope. So this one I definitely highly recommend buying if you do electronics work on a daily basis. I like this scope because you have a really good depth perception with it. Once you learn how to use a microscope and look through it, and you can, you know, you eventually you'll get that muscle memory when you're using it. Now for the star of the show, how does this thing compare to like say, one of these microscopes that are on like a boom arm stand like I have. If you are doing electronics repair work with a microscope, I think that this scope works well with Nintendo Switch motherboards and cell phone motherboards, maybe some tablet motherboards. And you can do work with game console motherboards. This is a, an original Xbox One motherboard, but there is some limitations. Now let me quickly demonstrate the limitations. Let's say we have a smaller motherboard like this one. I'm able to see the entire motherboard because the side of the stand here, right? There's enough space. So I can actually move this whole board around and see it underneath the scope. But when you have a board like this, let's say the area I wanna see is here, where, this, where these RAM chips are. There is absolutely no way that my scope is gonna be able to reach this area of the board. So if I need to solder a resistor here, there's my limiting factor. I'm not able to actually solder there with this scope. Now, I'm sure you could probably come up with some sort of modification, maybe put this scope like into this stand somehow maybe. That would actually be a pretty cool setup. But to be honest, that's the limiting factor for me. As far as doing electronic work on a daily basis, a scope like this, or like this would definitely suit me better than something like this. However, let's see the scope in action and actually review the quality of the camera, which is actually really good. Since I like this scope for looking at like cell phone boards and Nintendo Switch boards, this would be a great scope to just have at a shop just to kind of look and see if you see any problems or any knocked components, or if you actually want to do work on this. You got your gooseneck lights here. You actually have a light under here as well. So it's an all around super good scope, but let's actually see it in action. So right out of the box, this thing does come with a micro USB cable by itself, which is somewhere on my bench here, but it also does come with this special cable where you can plug in USB and it does come with a power brick as well. You plug it in here, plug this into the wall. Then you have a micro USB end that plugs into the actual device. And then this barrel connector plugs right here in the back on the bottom. Before we look at a motherboard, I want to show this. This is that cable I was talking about. It does have a power button here where you could turn the whole unit off, turn the whole unit back on, and you can also turn these lights down 
or turn them back up just using this little remote here. There is a dial here on the front where you can actually turn this and turn this light on or off or up or down which is also really, really cool and very useful. All right, so I'm looking at the video quality here and this thing is definitely comparable to the Northridge Fix microscope that I already use on a daily basis. Let's go ahead and zoom in on some areas. All in all, um, the working distance that I have here is roughly maybe three inches. So even though I can zoom up this close, the working distance isn't super good for doing very, very small BGA work or doing very, very small component rework. There's not a lot of space to really get under here and grab a component. Um, and really to use hot air up this close is not a really feasible option either. Looking around here, like being able to analyze things and diagnose things, um, that's, this would definitely be a choice that I would pick if I were just needing a scope to essentially scope things out and see if there's any broken connections or any issues on the board before I hand it to the board guy, um, this scope would definitely be a win for me. So let's say hypothetically I wanted to zoom in on these USB-C connector pins here. I can get up really, really close in high depth and actually see what's going on here and see if there are any broken pins. However, my working area to get a pair of tweezers under there is not very good. There's not a lot of distance. However, the actual screen itself that I'm looking at, the quality is very, very good. I'm sure that this is like a 1080p image, if not a little bit better. It's very, very clean. And also, I am using HDMI out at the same time as looking at the screen on the unit itself. So I am very, very impressed. Now something I really like about this scope is if you want super up close and personal views of components or solder joints, I mean, goodness gracious, look at that. I can see exactly what's going on. Now there is absolutely no working distance. I mean, I've got maybe a centimeter um, in between the actual board and the scope at this point. But I mean, I mean, look at the ability that I can actually zoom in here and look at these components. I mean, this is insane. So, should you buy an Andon Star Microscope? I think if you're going to use this to fix smaller boards and you're going to use this to check boards out or however, yes, one billion percent, I think this scope is the scope for you. If you're fixing jewelry, this actually might be the scope for you too. It just depends on what you're doing. However, if you're using your microscope to pump out like a ton of HDMI ports on game console boards, QFN chips, running jumpers, all that, you gotta buy one of these scopes. It's at Parco Scientific. Um, I'll leave the link in the description for it. All, all of them will have links in the description to buy. The money that you invest in a scope like this, I mean, I, I invested probably four, three hundred, four hundred dollars when I bought the scope plus the mount and all that, probably pre-COVID. When I bought this scope, it was an investment, not only for YouTube, but it was also an investment for my business. And this scope has literally carried my business through. So if you're gonna be doing micro soldering all the time, you gotta buy a scope like this. Now, if you're going to buy a scope for making videos, getting this, this trinocular semi-focal microscope is the option you want. You don't want just a trinocular, you want a trinocular semi-focal microscope. Unless you wanna buy the Northridge Fix microscope, which I also highly recommend. I mean, the camera quality that you'll get out of this scope is just insane, it's so good. All right, so I'm gonna just, uh, I'm gonna take these scopes and just go fix some boards. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Next time, let's chase the fix. I'll see you guys.